Fundamentally, what we're trying to do is build tools to allow anybody to be their true self. Um, there's a lot of people that feel uncomfortable on camera. Here's like a much more detailed side-by-side -side view of my face being captured alongside uh, the face of the 3D character. And so what's happening is it's tracking individual facial blend shapes um, mm -hmm. and then relaying them back into that Unreal Engine to uh, render them. I work as a radiologist and uh, the last four years I've been really interested in using artificial intelligence for segmentation. And this is a really nice thing with uh, TensorFlow.js, I think, is that you can interact with the AI models. It doesn't have to do fully automatic uh, predictions, but you can actually kind of guide uh, the models to get the result that you want. We're going to see a, an animatronic talking backpack um, that uses uh, face mesh. And it was sort of an, a, a comedian in the wild experiment um, that respected social distancing. It does what you see. It, it puts all these tracking points on a face and it can track it with and without glasses. It has an incredibly high frame rate, uh, even in JavaScript and even in browser. So wouldn't it be great if you could use this technology to control animatronics? So this is an example of how Cardinal Health is using RoboFlow to improve the backrooms of pharmacies. So they have a division of their company um, that works with pharmacists where one pharmacist can manage several locations remotely over a, a video stream. And so this runs in the browser on an iPad. And previously it was just a video chat between the pharmacist and the technician. And then they used RoboFlow to add on a pill counting feature um, that helps the pharmacists uh, be augmented by the computer vision model so they don't have to count from scratch. They can um, use the model to estimate and then you know, adjust up and down where the model has you know, not gotten an exact count. The video that I'd love to show here is uh, a video piece that I constructed, which I call Mirror Exercise. And this is an AI-generated duet with myself. So what you're seeing here is um, in the, the figure in black is my real motion capture data from a couple data taking sessions in the studio. And in blue, you see a dancing accompaniment that is generated by the model. So in each case, the model is seeing a certain segment of my movements and is um, creating a slight variation on it in some sense. It's a hand tracking engine called Yoha. And so what it does is it processes the uh, video feed of your webcam and it detects the location of your hand in this video feed. And the goal of it is that it allows you to quickly sketch something roughly similar to how you would do it um, on a whiteboard. Himo is a visual workflow engine that allows you to build very complex solutions in just minutes. And we do that through a drag and drop interface, which helps you uh, define any kind of process without the need for coding. So uh, this is the final version of the program. The video is a bit sped up, so things happen fast, but you can see that as water is taken out from the container, the graph reflects the changes of, uh, in the level of the liquid, liquid which, is, which is what we wanted. We wanted to go beyond machine and even beyond the clinic. And so that's really when we decided to expand our platform into computer vision and delivering care directly into patients' homes on their own devices. We're a medical device that we can run on any device fully web-based and you can see these patients doing different exercises, upper body, lower body, with real-time feedback, counting their reps. We track their range of motion. We gather, gather all that and send it back to the clinician for review to help modify their home exercise plans accordingly.